All right. Well, hi, everybody. Nice to see you. Hi, Roger. I don't think we've met before. No, have we? we haven't. No. Hi. Oh, good to see you. Yeah, yeah. And hi, Peter. Howdy. Hello again, Stephanie. Hi, and, Tom. Uh, <laughs> this, this is our monthly Love in Action group. And um, it is uh, Tuesday. I know it's the, the fourth Tuesday. That's all I know. <laughs> and, oh, hey there, Victoria. Hi. Hi, everyone. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. We're just getting started. And so um, I was thinking it might be nice if uh, we gave people to, you know, just a chance to share something that is alive for them and maybe, you know, a few topics to pick from. Um, if, if recently you've um, found yourself in the role of talking with other people and sharing, teaching, sharing, whatever you want to call it. And um, you had an experience that you want to share about that, maybe something that that actually felt good. You know, everything's welcome, but you know, some something that felt good and sharing with other people, or it could even be something good that you felt in sharing or just interacting with another human, you know, outside of any context of of the principles even. And the third option is just share anything that you're feeling good about. <laughs> so, so hopefully, hopefully, and if you don't have that, hopefully it will develop as we speak. <laughs> <laughs> um, and there's something I wanted to share that I really, that happened about a week and a half ago. I connected with someone in another community and we were we were chatting about the idea of doing um, an exchange, and that we would we would coach each other, so to speak, and we'd meet a couple times a month and take turns. So we just we just had a little you know get to know you talk, and it was really really quite quite lovely, just chatting with this other person, and we kind of we kind of set up in a few minutes, kind of like what our, our routine would be, and then. I was like, great, okay, well, you know, it's kind of like, see you next time. But then the other person said, well, actually, I have something now that I want to talk about. Is that okay? So we we talked. And they were describing a, a real, you know, like a real life business thing that was going on that they were having a hard time with. You know, basically, um, having to make a decision that had some financial impact on this person's life and business. And they were just saying, you know, I've had some difficulties with people in the past around this. And so now I have a new opportunity and this person wants me to sign on to, you know, basically it's a lot like an agent type person, marketing agent type person who's going to help them do, you know, build their, their, their business. And they said, you know, I just, there's some things about this I don't feel good about. I don't feel like this is really a good thing. And I notice I'm having panicky thoughts about it. And then I'm going to meet with them tomorrow. And I just kind of, kind of reflected back to them that, you know, well, you know, I heard two things in what you said. One is you, you don't feel like this is a good fit. And that actually you see that, that your thoughts are, creating this panic in you. So I said, that's really good. That's really good to, to just even see those things. And then I just said, you know, just, you know, take a moment right now and just kind of look, if you can look at this decision you have to make and just see, like, just, let's just see what, what you, what comes up. And so they kind of stopped, you know, I could feel like quieting down, you know, they closed their eyes. And after like 30 seconds, just opened their eyes and said, oh, wow. You know, they, they, they felt something. And what was so interesting about it, we never, we only talked for a few minutes after that, never even mentioned what the decision was. And I just said something like, like, like what's going on? And they just said, wow, I just have this spacious feeling. And you could see in their their body language and their voice and the, something happened. And what was really interesting, I then I felt it too. 
I felt were kind of what 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 they felt. And um, one of the things that this person I talked about in the beginning is that they know a little bit about the three principles, but not really. They, they haven't really um, explored that much. And so it occurred to me when when we, we were wrapping up and this person was having this really nice experience. And I said, oh, by the way, like what you're experiencing right now, that's all the three principles. That's what the three principles are about. And I don't think it just kind of came out of me, you know, because Sid Banks always said it's, it's really ultimately about being in a nice feeling. And so, so together as we chatted, shared, um, you know, reflecting back to someone and then inviting them to look, just look. Because, you know, things things can change so fast for people. You know, that people, people can tell you something and be in a really, whatever state they're in. And then two seconds later, if we ask them just to look now, look fresh in the moment, it can look totally different. It can look totally different. And I, and I feel like that's what happened in this little interaction. And the other thing is I wasn't even expecting it. I wasn't expecting that during this kind of get to know you talk that we were going to have like a mini session, but that's what happened. And so benefiting for me, I'm sure, I'm sure for her, but a little bit for me too. So, so that's just an example of something that happened in the past couple of weeks that that I felt good about. And when, when it comes up again, like I continue to feel, feel good about that. So, mm. so anything, and again, like, 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 like when I first asked you to share something, maybe something popped in your mind, maybe you didn't have anything, but now as we go along today, when, you know, if you feel moved to speak, like I just invite you look fresh in the moment, like, like, what do you see right now? So, Tom, I, I, I feel moved to ask you to repeat what you said. <laughs> no, mm. Not, not, not everything. <laughs> not uh, everything. Just, sure. just, just the opening question. The opening yeah. question. Yeah. So the opening question that, that that we came in with was, um, you know, this this is an opportunity for for people to share. Um, and oh, I see Bruce coming in. Maybe I'll pause. Hey, Bruce. <laughs> <laughs> um good 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 timing coming in because i was just kind of kind of repeating what i said in the beginning so this is just an opportunity for everyone to just share something that that is in your heart and some prompts maybe if you want to call them that to share would be you know if you had an interaction with someone maybe in the context of coaching or teaching or being in a group if you had an interaction with someone that you just feel good about and want to share that or if you had an interaction with someone outside of the whole realm of like formally sharing you know just another human or an, or maybe an, <laughs> it could be a cat too right <laughs> or a dog <laughs> just you know an interaction with, with someone that you feel good about and then if, if either of those two things don't spur anything on just if you feel like sharing anything you feel good about right now He's giving so many good choices, right? And if you don't like those, you just say whatever you want. <laughs> may May I share something, Tom? Yeah, please, Steph. So I thought I'd share a little bit about this interaction I had earlier today with, um, with a woman. It's the first time that I've met her. And she came to me through an article on my website that's about something called human design. And if you've heard of human design, if you haven't, it's one of those, it's kind of like astrology meets Kabbalah meets I Ching kind of, this is, this is your chart. This is like who you are. And it's not something that I really put a lot of stock in, but I've written about it. And for some reason, the, there's not a lot of information about this particular aspect of human design in the context of business. And so she found me. And sometimes I have a little bit of nervous thinking about this because this is not somebody who 
is necessarily, they're certainly not asking about the three principles. They're maybe not even interested in transformative coaching. They're coming to me through the lens of human design, which is kind of like, what am I supposed to do based on what this little chart says? That's not what I take from human design in its highest form, but it's sometimes that's my thinking about it. Like, oh, they're going to want me to read their chart and do an analysis. So I don't really spend very much time there, but that's where to give you a background on how this woman found me. And I just asked her, she said, I've got a lot going on. And I said, you want to tell me about it? And she listed the things and I listened, I listened for a while without a lot on my mind, with a few things on my mind here and there. And what I ended up talking about was home. And that there were two things I was seeing. One that she had a lot going on and it felt like a really good time to slow down and reflect and really give herself some space to see what she knows about moving forward. Cause she did know a lot already. I could hear it in what she said. She was drawn to certain things and then there were other things she was uncertain about. And then I said, the other piece, she said, I, I'd really like my mind to feel different. I said, how would you like it to feel? She said, simple and more sure. And I said, well, that's available right now. Not the kind of certainty that means, you know, everything's going to work out exactly the way you want, but the certainty of home. And the simplicity of this is all you need to be with right now. And it's enough. And I think there might have been a few stray thoughts that went, oh, God, she's coming to me with something practical. And this is not practical and actionable. And like, and I really, really, most of the time, I'm, I mean, honestly, I know enough not to pay attention to that because I can see the person in front of me go. Yeah. She's like, yeah. You're right. I needed to hear that today. And it's so simple. It's so simple. My little mind wants to throw it out. Like it's just too simple. How is that going to help someone? But it's exactly like the truth is obvious and simple. When we feel it, we know it. And it touches something that sparks inside of us, stirs and awakens. And I don't know what she does with that. But we had just a beautiful ending to our conversation and she thanked me for it. She's like, I feel really blessed to have this conversation with you. And I said, the feeling is mutual because I also got to feel her passion and her life and aliveness. And I got to see wisdom in action through her. And it really was beautiful. So it was like Tom said, there was something in it for him too, right? When he was talking to this woman, there was something for me too. And it's like that anytime we even spend a few seconds looking within and it's so good. And I just glad I got another reminder, even in telling you this, I'm reminding myself it's, it's precious. Hmm. Xander has a naughty camera. <laughs> So yeah, we Tom and I would love to invite you to share an interaction you had and what you saw in it, perhaps. If nobody. <laughs> I if think nobody want to <laughs> talk, then I will I will share something. First of all, nice to meet you here, guys. I know yeah. nearly everyone from different groups here, there, and uh, I don't know today. I just after your newsletter, or I I saw one of your uh, email, Stephanie, and I this I saw that there is a meeting today, and I said, okay, let's <laughs> let's visit this this group meet meet. 
pick the group. So if you don't know me, I'm Victoria, living in Ireland the last eight years now, and but I'm originally from Hungary. And uh, I met with the, stumbled across with the three principles a year ago only. So I'm a new, new, but I already saw a lot and it's just, it's amazing. It's a life-changing experience and understanding was for me. It's, I, I, I truly believe that it saved my marriage and everything, <laughs> everything. My, my sanity become a better parent and so on and so on. So I, I share best on my ability as I can with people around me and and I open up to to talk in in small groups and the last couple of weeks and days I think that the biggest things what I experienced that really the 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 power of be present but how powerful is that it's unbelievable. Even without telling anything about the three principles, just to be there, just to see other people, to see animals, see the nature, just to be present. And many times I, I love to work morning. I go to take my daughter to school and have a little walk around. And when I am present, that stop by each flower, everything what 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 I see, I just be more receptive to see the good things, the nice things, the the beauty, the wonder of the nature. Like every little flower is just so beautiful, and uh, as well that seeing other people, how they are creating their suffering. Like my my husband, for example, what I recognize that I'm not teaching him because he's not really in that kind of person who is receptive. He says that I know what I have to know. But he changed. <laughs> He changed, he know that I know my thinking, but, and I know that when it's, when I feel good, it's feel good, when I feel bad, yes, I know that it's my thinking. And previously I tried to convince him or, or was more kind of irritated or how oh, you cannot understand this. It's so simple. <laughs> but no, I just, I just stay with him and 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 accept that he what he's doing with his self and just to be present with him it's it's help him to calm down and 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 come back here and to seeing others as well everyone as even kids morning I met with one of my friends and uh, our daughters are friends and they was playing at the weekend and the mommy says that how one child was getting more physical to kick the others from play from 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 the game or something and i says that you know that 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 child most probably just was lost in those moments it's nothing wrong with that child. There is nothing to be punished or called out. It just has to explain to by someone that sometimes we just think crazy things and we don't have to act and react. So for me, that's that's kind of how I elevate my understanding and my consciousness level to to getting really I see the innocence in people 
And that's a big one because I was really blaming everybody and everything, everything else, why they are acting and reacting to certain things. And it's just so beautiful when And when I am present and not just listening stories, I think that I am able to help and calm down people. The big, biggest example sometimes is my, my daughter when she has some, some frustration about certain things. She's seven years old. And just to see her that suffering when she lost in her thinking. And previously I was as well more reactive and and, and doesn't, doesn't see her pain when she couldn't make a decision, how hard, how bad feeling is that? And now when I see it, I understand it better. And being present and not reactive, it's, allow her to calm, calm down quicker. And it's just so, so helpful in, in many different ways. And what I really see that, that the presence, because when we are present, we are not judging, we are not thinking about ourselves, we just be with the others and that's bring them back as well to the presence. So for, for me, that's, one of the biggest discovery for myself at the, at the moment, just to be present and the power of that. It's beautiful, Victoria. And it's so, so simple. All right, I think about now, I work with a lot of therapists and coaches, and they're familiar with this term called co-regulation, which is how psychologists explain that when you're with someone, when you're upset and you're with someone, they help you regulate because you regulate together. And I think that that's just naturally what we do when we come together. And it seems that that presence, deep presence, and that stillness that we find there, that peace that we find there is a really strong influence on a group without saying anything, without doing anything. And I've had experiences where I'm with someone and they're upset and I get amped up and get upset with them and we both go, <laughs> right? And I've also had those experiences where someone's upset and I'm with them and I just am with them. And it doesn't upset me because I see what's happening and it's okay. And they start to settle and settle and settle and settle. It's like we, and it only takes one person. I think we could be in this group, the, the group of us here right now, and one of us could be present and the rest of us could all be caught up in our minds. And sooner or later, we're going to start to settle. We could test that maybe sometime work ourselves up on purpose and test it <laughs> but oh so beautiful to see that in action in such everyday beautiful ways i love that Victoria. Okay. i saw that there was a hand there was a hand from bruce before did you still want to speak bruce and then i see xander now too Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, I had a incident. Well, it was last night um, in a men's group that I lead, and um, the one I'm reflecting on is my nephew, uh, who's done a lot of inner work, and. The group is centered around high conflict divorce and parental alienation of kids. And um, we've all been through that, I being decades and the most senior than uh, in the last five years, five to 10 years, my nephew, and then one fellow just this year and another one's about ready to enter that world. 
so we support one another but um i was introduced to the principles in the mid 80s at the minneapolis institute when uh keith blevins and joe bailey and chris heath were there um and you know i'm kind of blowing on some hot coals and rekindling uh with all the current writings and offerings and I'm what I'm looking for is how to support my nephew who uh, you know here's two examples of kind of in your face purposeful nefarious behavior of his ex who alienated him from his daughter at their prom and graduation from high school and then again now just four years later uh, a couple weekends ago when she was getting her pinning for her registered nurse and her bachelor's degree uh, in a very public setting making sure that the father was excluded um, while he was in the audience and she became the one that pinned her. And he, like me, has been in healthcare for over a quarter of a century, me, half a century. Um, and his father, my late brother. And he's supported her whole, whole education financially. And, um, I was at a loss. I guess we were all so devastated as to how public someone could be at such a joyous time in someone's life. And how do you uh, counter that, support someone? I guess what I'm looking at is uh, how would the three principles support grief? because that's truly what it is. I mean, it's like, I'm here to be for you. And once again, just a big pail of cold water and a big F you. Um, obviously a troubled, troubled woman um, who is extremely vindictive. And, uh, you know, he's just thinking that his daughter's going to, leave the local area and kind of head towards mom's direction. And, um, you know, that's her whole purpose is to alienate those kids. And, um, you know, it was witnessed by other people in that. And I just, uh, I briefly brought this up with Chris when I was listening to Chris and Judy and, um, I may get back to her because she's still licensed in our home state, but I just, uh, I don't know how to bring the three principles into that environment and support that man who's done such hard work and has an open heart and is loving and caring. And, you know, you talk about setting boundaries and all that, but I just can't uh, get my head around, oh, well, they're just, in a bad state and you know just wait and things will clear but you know maybe it'll be another decade and as he said in the sharing was well next thing you know this guy that she's in relationship with whether they get married or not he'll be the guy to walk her down the aisle you know it's just one after another and these kids don't have the skill base to realize uh, how caught up in their parental pathology is so i'll shut up but i'm just looking for suggestions especially from stephanie and tom about um, using the principles in, in that sort of situation gain some clarity and growth. And uh, I know there's not going to be any instant turnaround and 
you can't become vindictive and say, okay, you've done this to me now, therefore. Uh, but, you know, a beautiful man who's given so much was just shut up. Thanks. Yeah, well, thank thank you, Bruce. Thanks for all that. Um, I'm kind of curious in in the time that you you know that you spent with him. You know what you saw in him during during the entirety of your your time together, and obviously he's he's sharing something that that is very painful. And, you know, it's painful when it happened and it's painful in the moment. Um, one of the things that I think is helpful, and, and maybe it's more helpful than, than specifically trying to, like, see how, you know, bring the principles in, is to, to kind of look at what's already going on, like what's already happened, and especially in that encounter with you. So the thing that I, I kind of get curious about is, you know, during the time that you were together, did he change at all in that time? Did he go maybe, you know, he's down a little bit up, a little bit down. Did, did, did the, I guess what I'm saying, did, did, did the sense of suffering that he brought to, to your meeting, did that change at all during the course, course or was it constant? Or were there times where where he maybe you maybe saw a glimmer of insight, or maybe for a moment he felt a little better? Do you know what I'm trying to say? Did you, did you what did you notice? <clears throat> well, we meet on a weekly basis for about an hour and a half. The four of us have for several years, and a week ago when it was just fresh, uh, you know, it was just like the air was out of the balloon you know he was just um resigned to uh you know maybe this is my lot in life and this is my relationship uh with this kid and he's got one more up there too and then last night which was a week later um you know a lot of resignation but the other men were trying to support him because they live in the same stew that, mm -hmm. you know, this too will pass. And, you know, it always gets back to love is the answer. And, um, you know, but he had shared with some other therapist who he felt didn't allow space for his pain yeah you know just well you can't do anything about it and i think he felt disrespected and unheard yeah. as a dad who's given so much and i heard that and i felt that mm -hmm. because uh you know, my son was across the country all through his elementary school years until I finally got custody in his middle school and high school years. And, you know, he lives in our state right now and is a wonderful young man. But uh, I was at his graduation two weeks ago when he got his MBA at the University of Oklahoma. Um, and the other side of the family was there. So, you know, it's there's still a lot of pathology there and lack of growth but um you know i guess what i was realizing for my nephew is i hope you don't have to endure indefinitely i was just looking for some hope but yeah you know i to answer your question tom i think he had lifted a bit you know there yeah. was a swing but certainly not resolved because right. um, these kids may leave uh, for the summer to go up north and be in this uh, fairyland, you know, with mom and a cabin on the lake and 
you know, it's kind of party time and she just sold her home uh, and she's got some assets and, you know, there's, there's no self-reflection uh, because like when this daughter came down to his spot on their present lake, uh, you know, she wanted to use his boat to entertain some of her kids and her friends. And he just said to her, um, are you interested in a relationship? You know, not just to use me. And she says, oh, well, forget it. You know, I'll never ask you again. And it's that kind of thing. There's no ownership of relationship. And the so term that we Bruce, use. Bruce, I'm yeah. sorry to interrupt you. Um, I just want to bring us back a little bit out of the story and to the to the thing that you're asking, which is like, how could you best support him? And, you know, what I'm hearing, first of all, is how this touches you, how much you feel for this young man from your own experience and also his and really want to help him. And I'm sure he can feel that, which right away makes a difference. Like presence, that that compassion, that love that we have for each other is felt and is deeply powerful. And the three principles aren't something that we can we can use or turn on like a like a special tool I'm thinking about like a lightsaber to cut through the bullshit that we experience it's um they're a really simple explanation of what's already happening and how we're already using it and I couldn't say what I would say to this young man if he were in front of me, because I'm not there, and I couldn't say what you should say. But what I can point to is that the more you see about it in the moment for yourself, that will give you something you can share that's real. So, for example, how do you feel when you tell his story? That's the power of thought you're feeling it, whether it might be compassion or hurt or anger on his behalf, protection, maybe, I don't know what the feelings are. That's the three principles in action. There you go. Thought lighting up the space of consciousness and you feeling it. And that, just seeing that, it seems sometimes, again, like I was saying, sometimes it seems too simple. But when you see that, there's a space that opens up. There's a freedom. You're not at the mercy of that thought. And it, it will pass, just like you noticed it did. It lifts a little. It may go down again. The feeling goes up and down. And always, there's something underneath it. There's that space underneath it. And it's not a supposed to, it's not a how to, it's just a, oh yeah, there that is. And it sounds like you were giving this young man what he needed in that moment, which was to be heard. He needed to tell his story. He needed to pour it out. A therapist didn't listen. And, and sometimes we just really need to be with what we're experiencing and not rush to push it away or try to get rid of it. And that relieves some pressure. And then being with someone, the possibilities open up. So that's that's what I would suggest is kind of just see, what do you see? What do you notice as you hear him speak? And the more you can drop into that place of presence and be that listening space for him, the easier that will be. But it's not like you have to get anywhere. I think he got what he needed. Because he already has it. Yeah, and, and Bruce, just uh, the other thing I wanted to say is just real couple of things is is first of all, like I think he's really he's really lucky 
to have you and that group in his corner, you know, as you are with them. And the one thing that I'm always intrigued by is, you know, Sidney Banks, even before he talked about the principles, he said, everybody has perfect mental health. That they, they, they just don't know it. So, so as you look at what he has shared with you in the time you've spent with him, anytime you see just even a little glimmer of his mental health in action, I think that's really helpful. In fact, when he said, you know, that therapist didn't listen to me and, and that, that was a sign of his mental health because he knows what he needs. He knows something didn't work. And that's, that's like, wow, like he's seeing something. So that's what this is about to me. It's like any, any glimmer, I think that might be the word that you use that you see in another person's mental health or you see in your mental health in relation to him. It's just, it's just got to be helpful. So I just think, I think you, you guys are really lucky to have each other. So that's kind of what I wanted to say. Yeah. Thanks yeah. for sharing that, Bruce. Yeah, thank you, Ruth. And uh, Xander, do you still have something you'd like to share? Your hand was up and down, but I saw it. <laughs> yeah, when you acknowledged that I had it up, I just lowered it, right? Um, I have a, I, I'll keep them both very short. I just want to talk just a couple of things. Um, I was, I was on a Zoom call recently, and 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 in a, in in the in the attached group, um, I had said I'm not going to do what I was going to do. I don't want to get into detail, but I'm not going to do what I was going to do because um, I'm 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 not I'm not in the right frame of mind, so it's best I don't, and because like other people were involved and then we were on a zoom call it was a few days later on a zoom call and and i then i then i then defended my position because someone because a couple and victoria knows what i'm talking about she she was on that call but i i because a couple of people said you know i hope you find your clarity so what, 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 do you, what do you mean? What do you what do you mean? I've lost my frame of mind, right? And not, not that I've lost my frame of mind. I'm I'm not in the best frame of mind. Does that does that mean does that mean I've lost my clarity? No, no. I'm going to defend my position here, right? <laughs> and I started to talk about it during during this 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 call, this Zoom discussion, and I realised, you know, wait a minute. I've kind of lost my clarity here, right? It's just that, <laughs> you know, and I talked myself around completely. It was, a, right? Yeah, you know, and what I realised was the analogy that I used at the time was when my mother used to t tell us when we were kids, you know, if you eat that packet of crisps or that packet of sweeties or whatever, um, you won't enjoy, you, you're not going to eat your dinner, right? And your dinner, your meal is more important than the sweets kind of thing. Well, I thought, right, well, and the analogy I used, well, one, one sweetie isn't going to spoil the dinner, right? But I'll tell you what, um, if even just one small um, thought that is, that is that, I don't know, lowering, lowering my my state of consciousness, if you will, my, you know, my, whatever, it's thrown me somewhere, even, it, it, just, just a wee bit of crast procrastination, it's going to, it's going to throw me out, it, it really is, you know, um, and what I said at the time was, it, it's, it's, it wasn't that I was learning something, it was more that I was being reminded that, you know, yeah, you, you know, you can defend your position all you like, but hey, you lost your clarity. No matter how, how you know, you just you just weren't there one hundred percent, and you were lower than I was lower than than what I had. Uh, you know, I had I hadn't. You might say I hadn't a leg to stand on, right? <laughs> I was guilty, right? Um, 
Uh, okay, so the, the the other thing that I wanted to um the other thing that I wanted to because the question that this goes back several months actually the 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 the, the questions posed um that was more that was more sort of my own I don't know but so involving someone else um this person. I I decided that I was going to try and talk to this person about the three principles, but I didn't want to mention the three principles, right? And he said to me, he started asking me questions, but I, I don't remember what how I opened it, but he started to ask me questions. And then next thing I knew, he was telling me from his history from way back um, when he was responsible for a crew of men on a ship and how they covered for him and, and, and so on and so forth, you know, and how they covered and how he put their lives in danger. And then they told me another story that was something that was that, that, that bothered him because at, on another occasion, um, it, he almost died. It, it was, it, it took a beating basically. Um, I don't want to go into. It was quite horrific, you know. So I, I don't. I'm not going to go into details. Um, but basically, he was. He almost died. He was at death's door, and so he'd been assaulted by a couple of people, and you know that's that's really all the detail we need here. Um, and we talked to run. We talked to run the 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 sailor thing, you know, the when he was at sea, you know that, and. After about, I don't know, it must have been, it must have, we were sitting in the car, he, he dropped me off at my at my home and we were sitting in his car um, and he didn't want to come in but he, because he was he was going. But it took us, this conversation took about two, two hours, three hours, but he was just going, right? <laughs> um, but, uh, and... We talked around the whole thing about him being responsible for this that this ship and what have you, um, and we he talked a little bit around the other thing, um, and he's, uh, we, I don't remember anything that was said, but after a couple of hours, he said, right, okay, he says, I, I, I see what you're saying about you know this, but what about these guys, that, um. that assaulted me. And I said, well, I said, this might take a bit of explaining. I don't want to get into detail. I said to him, I said, you know, I said, some people, some, some people, some people are sick. Some people are sicker than others. Um, and especially if they haven't, haven't seen how sick they are. They, they just they, they won't they won't see it. And he said, I'm going to put this into perspective, right? He's a member of a 12-step program. And one of the terms that we use quite often is, you know, but I mean there's a there's a I, I would call it a negative culture and that we talk about that no one there's no such thing as a um hopeless case. But we do no. But they do have a habit of saying some people are sicker, sicker than others, and that's a sort of contradiction because that's their um, I can't help this guy kind of thing, right? But you know, um, so but so he said to me, he says, my talking about the twelve step program. He said my sponsor used to come away with these cliches all the time, and I said, yeah, I said, but I'm only I'm only saying that some people are sicker than others because. Because I know that you understand that language. And he said, No, he says, that's not what I mean. He said, You know what you're talking about. I said, like, okay, that's that's a stroke for the ego. <laughs> right. But um just to finish this up, a, a couple of days ago I was talking with somebody else and I told them that that story um about and I I realized that I didn't. Um, I forget what was how I was going to end this, but what I realised 
when I was talking to the other person a couple of days ago was that um, I, I, I don't believe that I know what I'm talking about, right? And But he told me, I, you know what you're talking about. And I don't know how, how to, uh, but uh, I, I, I saw, I saw during the, the conversation a couple of days ago that perhaps I've always saw myself as the guy, I want to help, but no one, no one, no one ever comes to me, <laughs> right? Uh, you know, I've tried to open a coaching business. No one ever comes to me, right? I've never made a penny through coaching, and I'm okay with that. I don't, I don't mind. I don't, I really don't care. Um, and, but I, what I saw the other day was that I, I do know. I'm t I actually, I actually can be of help to others, right? Um, I don't, I don't like marketing myself. I, I, I just don't. I can't be. I can't be annoyed. I almost said that. I, I, a not kind way, a not good way. Um, but yeah, I saw I, I, for, for myself. I saw that yeah, the 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 opportunities are there, or there is. I can create an opportunity, and I I know I know my next option. But uh, and there's no decision to be made. Um, it's just it's just a case of biting the bullet and saying, you know, I'm going to go for it. And I haven't, I haven't really. I've played at doing it. I've played at being that person, but I just haven't done it. It's about self belief, I believe. <laughs> Perhaps I don't know. But anyway, yeah, it was that was too much, probably. But there you go. That's that's all I'm going to say. <laughs> <laughs> Xander, I love that you give yourself permission to find yourself in something, to share something. I see the awareness you're bringing to it, which is increasing. It's increased since the time I've known you, by the way, like your clarity of speech and the, the awareness that you bring, the presence that you bring for yourself and noticing that, you know, you can't change something until you notice it. And I'm, I'm going to do a mini confession here because yesterday I screwed up in a meeting. I said something that was out of line and I kind of sort of knew it in the moment, but I was so unsettled that I didn't stop myself. I kind of went, I'm not going to say this. I'm going to say this. I'm not going to, okay, I'm saying this. It was like that. And in the scheme of things, it's small potatoes, but man, did I beat myself up for it? Like, oh my God, because I should know better. And was in a bad state last night about it. And this morning and today I look at it and I go, I was humaning. I saw a lot. I saw a lot of old patterns that still look real to me come back up. And I'll catch them faster next time because I'm seeing them a little more clearly and it, and I'm okay. And they're okay. And if there's, I'm not clear that I need an apology to give an apology, but I would, and I will, if it looks like I need to, and that's what I've got. And I think that's beautiful. So we have time to hear from Victoria again before we end. I will be short. I just, after listening, uh, Zanda, something came into my mind that why important from us to share this understanding? It's like to hearing these stories, it's like heartbreaking that someone is hurting another human being because they believe something what's going on in their head or even just listening through stories that it's it's because someone has some personal belief and act on it and not seeing the whole picture just seeing what's in in in, in the head in their head and how I see the principle and how I 
the power of us, these those people who knows about the principles that just with our presence we can we can calm people down, but maybe they will be curious how we can be that present or not reactive and there where you can show them and teach them. And how difference we can make in their life that instead of working on justice and 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 punish or 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 do something with those people who do harm instead of teach them not doing that. So instead of reacting what on that what they act we focus on more prevention and to sharing the three principles. I think that's preventing these events can happen in any ways. So that, that's what, what I just wanted to share. That I think that really spreading the love, the understanding, how we live our lives through our thinking, just to be present, just to see a human being before us or in, in a group or somewhere, it, that will make a difference. Thanks, Victoria. Peter, I see a hand. Can you be brief? Because we only have three minutes. Can I hold you to it? <laughs> what? Brevity is one of my hundred middle names. <laughs> uh, Xander, I don't know. You're, you're. Thank you for showing up. At least for me, as as a Rorschach uh, blot, you know that may not be a, a compliment, but it just. But what you said it feels very fertile to me. Uh, and I I know that I've spent a lot of time thinking. I. I should act on what I know. I should act on what I know. And I, I'm going to give Barb, Bob pa Barb Patterson, I think, some uh, credit for, she's the, she's the person in Three Principles Land who's, she talks about humans having an inner landscape. And uh, that speaks to me because I have realized, especially in the last couple of years, that as I see my inner landscape in different different lights, it's like different times of the day, sun shining through, mist in the hills. Uh, just there's sometimes when it's just so uh, the the path of life is open and clear, and it's it's just there. And uh, and other times, Everything I could say about it would say, oh, I can do something here. But some part of me, all I know for sure is some part of me is still waiting to be more. Here's a really bad, and I'll end with this really bad metaphor, but it's like as as I gain you know spiritual sensitivity, um, it's like I find myself being placed at a wonderful church organ and that I've turned into an orangutan. I not only have 10 fingers, but I've got 10 toes as well. <laughs> and I can, the, the, the ability to both respond and play is just more subtle and more diverse there uh, uh, that's all i can say is i don't know what i'm waiting for a lot of the time but when the life shows up it shows up sometimes that's all i know and and thank you thank you and th thanks to everyone who, who talked yeah this the stuckness I, yeah Thanks, Peter. So I think that brings a completion to our time together for today. Thank you so much for being here.
because your presence is precious. I honor it. I see it. I feel it. And I know that we share it. Thank you, guys. Thanks, everybody. See you next time. Thanks, Stephanie. Thanks, Tom. Yeah. Take care, everyone. Bye. Bye.